Isn't it crazy that you can mix together flour and water, let it sit, and it will catch a wild yeast? Okay, that's oversimplifying the process of making a sourdough starter from scratch a bit, but it really is extremely simple. It just takes a bit of time, patience, and persistence to get your starter going. Today, I'm gonna walk you through the process of making your own sourdough starter step-by-step step so you can start making delicious sourdough recipes in your own kitchen. I'll also be showing you the day-by-day -day progression so you can know exactly what to expect when you're making your own sourdough starter. It really is worth the time and effort, friends. There just isn't anything quite Quite like the depth of flavor that you get from a freshly baked loaf of sourdough bread. Bread risen with commercial yeast just doesn't compare. If you stick around until the end of the video, I'll show you some of my favorite recipes for using your sourdough starter. Plus, I'll get into a little bit of geeky science if you're interested in that. And I'll talk about why sourdough bread is healthier than bread risen with commercial yeast. Okay, let's dive in and get started. Before you begin, you'll need to gather some equipment. You'll need a very clean jar with a lid, I really like these Weck jars because they have a glass lid and it keeps out the bugs, but it's also not a tight seal, so it kind of lets your sourdough starter breathe. A scale or measuring spoons. I really recommend using a scale because then you don't have to continually dirty up your measuring spoons. A rubber band or a Sharpie to mark the height of the starter. I like using a rubber band because then you don't have to erase it each time. And a spatula or a spoon for stirring. I recommend using a spatula with a plastic handle because sourdough tends to stick worse to wood. And if you're going to use a spoon, use a stainless steel one or a plastic one instead of wood. You'll also need some all-purpose flour and some whole wheat flour. To begin with, you're just going to use whole wheat flour because the beneficial yeast and bacteria really like whole wheat, so you can get your starter going faster if you use whole wheat. But then you'll switch to a 50-50 blend of whole wheat flour and all-purpose flour and eventually to all all-purpose flour. This way you don't have to feed your starter as often because it won't be as active. On day one, I mixed together 30 grams of whole wheat flour and 30 grams of water in a jar. I marked the height of the starter with a rubber band and I placed a lid loosely on top and set it aside. Day two, the starter was kind of gray on top with maybe just a tiny bit of hooch or liquid on top. There was no rise and little to no bubbles. I discarded all but 30 grams and fed that with 30 grams each of whole wheat flour and water. By the way, you can just save all of your discard and put it in a jar and store it in the fridge and then once you have about a cup, you can make pancakes. On day three, the starter had doubled, was bubbly, and smelled slightly sweet, kind of like sprouted wheat. I fed it the same as day two. Day four, the starter had doubled the night before by 6 p.m., but I didn't feed it then because I had a headache. The next morning, day four, at about 9.15 a.m., it smelled sour, kind of like baby poo. I discarded all but 30 grams and fed that 30 grams each of whole wheat flour and water. That night at 9.53 p.m. it had doubled and it didn't smell quite as strong and I fed it the same as I did in the morning. Day five at 8.11 p.m. it had only risen a bit above the rubber band in about 24 hours. It smelled acidic and had a bit of liquid on top. And I fed it as before. On day six, I mixed together a 50-50 blend of whole wheat flour and all-purpose flour. At 10.11 p.m. on day six, the starter had risen a bit above the rubber band and there was some liquid on top, but not a lot, and it smelled acidic. I fed it 30 grams of the 50-50 flour mix and 30 grams of water. On day seven at 10.40 a.m., the starter had risen a bit above the rubber band and it smelled a bit acidic and kind of like baby poo. And there was a tiny bit of liquid on top. And I fed it the same as the previous day. At 10.15 that night, it had only risen a bit above the band, but it was starting to smell more pleasant. I fed it the same as in the morning. At around 10 p.m. on day eight, it hadn't risen much and I started feeding it with 100% all-purpose flour. I fed it 30 grams of all-purpose flour and 30 grams of water. And on day nine, I just left it to ferment. At 9.45 a.m. on day 10, the starter had risen by about one third to one half above the rubber band, and it smelled more like sourdough. It was pretty liquidy, so it probably was pretty fermented and also pretty hungry. 
I fed it the same as the day before with all-purpose flour. At around 10 that night, it had basically doubled and it smelled more like a mature sourdough starter. I fed it the same as in the morning. At 9 a.m. on day 11, the starter had doubled and it smelled pleasantly yeasty. And also, it passed the float test, so I knew it was ready to be baked with. I fed the starter as the previous day, and I took the discard and fed it with enough flour and water to make one cup of starter. I made pancakes with all of that discard that I had saved up in the fridge. I mixed together about 390-ish grams of starter, three eggs, one third cup of oil, three quarters teaspoon salt, one and a half teaspoons baking soda, three tablespoons of maple syrup, and they were yummy. That night, I used the cup of sourdough starter that I mixed together to make some bread dough, and I let that rise overnight, and then I formed it, and the next day I let it rise, and I baked it into some delicious bread. So yay, my starter was mature enough to raise bread. I continued to feed the starter daily until day 15. Since my starter was over two weeks old, it was strong enough to be able to store it in the fridge. I fed it one last time, and then I put it in the fridge for one week. After a week, I pulled it back out of the fridge and fed it, and it doubled and was bubbly, but the true test was baking with it. So I made a second loaf of bread, and it turned out beautifully. So the sourdough starter was definitely mature enough to live in the fridge and be fed once a week. Okay, let's geek out a tiny bit and talk about the science about how sourdough raises bread and also discuss the health benefits. So there's yeast and bacteria everywhere around us, in the air, on surfaces, on our hands. When you're making a sourdough starter, you're capturing that yeast and then you're feeding it and helping it to multiply and grow stronger. You're basically creating an environment where yeast and bacteria can thrive. That environment is warm and wet but you only want beneficial, not harmful bacteria to thrive. So the environment must also be very clean. That's why you wanna make sure all of your containers, utensils, and your hands are thoroughly washed when you're working with your starter. Now, when those beneficial yeasts and bacteria that you captured are fed, they create carbon dioxide, which creates bubbles, which is what raises the bread. So that's just kind of like a basic overview of how sourdough works. Now let's talk about the health benefits. When you long ferment bread with sourdough, you're basically basically pre-digesting the bread a bit, which makes it easier for you to digest and absorb the nutrients. Whole wheat contains a plant toxin called phytic acid. Phytic acid blocks certain nutrients from being absorbed by our body, which can result in deficiencies. But sourdough helps to break down this plant toxin so you can digest the nutrients in the bread easier. Sourdough bread is also slightly lower carb than regular bread, and the yeast and bacteria can even break down some of the gluten in the bread. So if you have a slight gluten intolerance, eating sourdough bread could be easier on your tummy. Okay, here are some of my favorite ways to use my sourdough starter. Sourdough discard banana bread is a great first sourdough recipe because it doesn't require a long fermenting time. You just pour the starter into the batter, mix it up, put it in the pan and bake it, and then you have some delicious sourdough discard banana bread. Another great beginner recipe is sourdough waffles. My recipe uses an overnight batter and these are just incredible. They're crispy and yeasty and delicious. Another easy recipe is my sourdough tortillas. These only require five ingredients and the dough is really easy to work with. These also don't require you to raise a loaf of bread, so they're a little more forgiving. Once you're feeling a little more confident in your sourdough skills, you could move on to my sourdough pull-apart rolls. This is my all-time most popular sourdough recipe on my blog, and for good reason. These are pillowy, soft, and delicious. Another delicious use for your sourdough starter is cinnamon rolls. My recipe has a very cinnamony filling and a cream cheese frosting. Once you're feeling quite confident, you can move on to my sourdough sandwich bread. This recipe uses a stiff levon, and so it takes a little bit more effort, but it's well worth it because this loaf is really soft and it's not super sour, and it's just perfect for sandwiches, toast, or just about any sort of topping you want to throw at it. So that's everything you need to know to get started with your own sourdough starter. If you have any questions, make sure to leave me a comment down below and I'll help you troubleshoot. If you enjoyed this video, 
please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more food videos. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bread rhythm. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Are you really good at making sourdough? I am really good at making sourdough. Are you really good at making sourdough?